Gasoline is proudly brought to you by the following sponsors. Welcome back to Gasoline viewers, we're here at the 2012 Victorian Hot Rod Show at the Melbourne Exhibition Buildings. It's a fantastic event this, with the highest quality of cars year after year after year. And there's people lined up here for miles just to get in the door. The car scene is booming, so let's go inside and see why. The 69 Dodge Charger, the bad boy of the muscle car scene. Why the bad boy, you ask? Think about this, the bullet car chase. That big, bad, black Dodge Charger chasing Steve McQueen and his green fastback Mustang. It's etched into my mind, and I'll never forget it as long as I live. I even show my kids that movie all the time, day in, day out. I'm trying to brainwash them. It's absolutely awesome. This thing here sports a 383 and a 727 Trans. It's painted in the original factory B3 blue. It's a very tidy car, and these things have got an absolute killer stance. I reckon if I want Tats Lotto, I'd like one of these in black and a green fastback bullet-style Mustang parked next to each other inside my shed. I reckon I'd be the happiest man alive. Well, viewers, we're here with Jody Vincitorio and his absolutely magnificent HQ two-door here behind us. It's only just been completed, mate. Tell us a bit about the car, the build, and we actually picked the car up originally, mate. All right. Uh, build time three years after ours. I got my own panel shop, and um, oh, what can I? Where do you start? I brought it. It was already tubbed when I got it, so I was already molested to all those Monaro freaks out there. So <laughs> that's the reason why I chopped it and molested it, you could say. So uh, yeah, don't shoot me on that one. Um, three years in the build. Uh, three inches out of the back of the roof. An inch and a half out of the front, when I chopped it, I uh, moved the roof forward, slammed the back glass down. Uh, it's 468, methanol, nitrous, injected, crower, staggered, big block. Yeah. Is that all? Yeah, you get that right, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah power glide, uh, all airbag system, big 2016 inch billets on the back, 18 fours on the front. Um, uh, it just keeps going and going, yeah. What sort of horsepower do you reckon she'll make? Uh, the mechanic said, Sandy said around 8, 850, and then I got 500 shot of NOS. What an absolute animal, mate. Thanks for talking to us. Right. Beautiful car. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Well, 
Well, here's one that's caught my eye, viewers. This beautiful 67 fastback Mustang Eleanor here, owned by Paul Magius. It's a beautiful looking car, I'm sure you'll agree, but it's a very angry car as well. It sports a big, bad 440 cube Windsor with Cleveland cylinder heads. Makes a hell of a lot of power and a hell of a lot of torque. This thing ran a 10 second pass on street tyres. Turn up, run a 10 and drive the thing home. What an absolute animal this thing would be out at the racetrack. It runs a C4 Trans, a big converter, 411 9 inch, 35 spline axles. You'd need those babies, believe me, because if this thing hooks up, it's going to break something for sure. It's got to be built tough. Beautiful car. I'm very envious of the owner. Enjoy the car, Paul. Well, viewers, I've found something extra special here. This incredible Mad Max interceptor replica. Who would ever have thought that 30 years on down the track, there's still so much hype around about that original Mad Max movie. It was absolutely incredible and a movie that I'll never forget. This car here has had an absolute intense build from the ground up. Every nut and bolt, every part has been done to perfection to try and replicate it to perfection. I'd imagine it'd be quite a hard task building a car like this, worrying that if something wasn't done right. And people say, hey, that's not right, this isn't right. So the research and homework that has to go into building a car like this is absolutely painstakingly unbelievable. You'll notice in certain areas of the car, some areas are flat paint, some areas have a lot of gloss, just like the original car in the movie. The blower and everything looks the same. It looks absolutely incredible. And if I had this thing, I'd be driving it around. Don't you worry about that. Well, viewers, look who we found here, Mr. GT, none other than David Frake from GT Ford Performance. Do you ever miss a car show, mate? Oh, I try not to, mate, but uh, yeah, love, love them, love the cars, that's what it's all about. Some incredible cars here too, mate, the, the standards are out of this world. Yeah, that's, uh, most of the hot rod shows they have, are the standard is really, really good, even in the car park, they've got some really good stuff out there too, so you get two shows at one, one in the car park, one inside, plenty of cars. Now, I saw you look at this Mad Max machine here behind us, mate. I remember you were telling me once before a friend of yours over in the US is flat out in a Falcon Coupe, and it's pretty big over there, is that right? Oh, yeah, he's a New York ex state trooper and got into them when uh, the Mad Max appeared over there. And uh, we sent a lot of stuff to America for um, guys with the Mad Max replicas and GTs. A uh, guy in particular has got a GT Coupe as well as a Mad Max replica, and they just, they just love them. Well, it's good to see a bit of Aussie muscle and a bit of Aussie muscle in the US too. Thanks for talking to us, Dave, and I'll see you next time I'm down and get some bits for Project Wars, mate. No worries, mate. See you then. <laughs> now, here's something a little bit different, viewers. This absolutely sensational 1969 Ford Ranchero Rio Grande, owned by Dave Wadsworth. This thing is absolutely sensational. The first time I saw this car was when I was down at Trevor Davis Auto Refinishes. He did all the paint and body work on this car and it's absolutely superb. It was actually a factory Vermilion Fire red car. How's that? But they've done something a little bit unique and a little bit different down at Trevor's shop. As for the rest of the car, it's got a mild 351 Cleveland in it with a C4 Auto and a 3800 high stall converter got a twin two and a half inch system on it, disc brake front end and a full set of Kony adjustable shock absorbers all round. This thing's also got factory Ram Air. Now that's a fairly unique option and it really makes this car unique. Should be a great ride and something just a little bit different, I'm sure you'll agree. back at Rocket Industries once again, so let's go inside and take a look around. So you want to build your very own hot rod? Build it yourself at home in the shed? Well, this is where you start. This beautiful 1932 Ford Roadster, all steel body. You can get them in various year ranges, but this is a 32 and a great looking thing too. Look, there's a lot of hot rods out there that are built out of fiberglass. That was a pretty common practice and has been for many years, but if you want to go all steel just like the original, then this is the option for you. They're not exactly like the factory steel body. They do actually have some upgrades. They're reinforced around this rear area here because they had a bit of a, a habit of cracking back in the old days. 
And the original bodies, things like the firewall. The firewall is actually recessed here. So if you put a different drivetrain in, you can fit it all in around the tunnel area and everything. You've got bigger engines going in these days, so it's important to be able to fit them in. Things like these gas struts to operate the rear trunk lid. That's all modern technology and it just helps make the car a little bit more user friendly. So basically they've got some modern updates. Things like side intrusion protection in the doors. If you have a collision, you've got a little bit more protection there for the driver. Also things like burst proof door locks. And have a look at the finish on these things. They're absolutely incredible and a great option. They've got smooth hinges on them, the works. Another thing I like about these bodies too when they actually produce them is the fact that they're coated with an entire film, an oily film, to stop these things from rusting. So you imagine when you put your handprints on these things, you don't want them to create surface rust that you've got to rub off when you prepare these things for paint. Interestingly, they produce about 2,500 to 3,000 of these bodies per year, so they're very popular worldwide. Now those bodies are fantastic, but more importantly you need a chassis to bolt them to. This chassis here is a 34 Ford reproduction chassis. They're a beautiful piece of work too. They come as a complete kit, a complete package for the home hot rod builder. They come with a full 31 spline 9 inch rear end, 4 bar setup the works. The front end is double A arm, set up for right hand drive, Australian conditions, they have Willwood brakes, beautiful suspension, all the gear you need. Now the braking system is fully complete. From this brake booster and master cylinder all built in here right through to brake hoses, the works, even brake fluid so that you can get this thing all bled up and ready to rock and roll. The other thing I've noticed with these chassis too is the welds are an absolute work of art. You can see that the craftsmen have done these things by hand. I've heard of guys welding chassis up at home on their garage floor and it can be an absolute nightmare because you can imagine the heat and the penetration that goes into these things. They can warp, they can buckle, the works. These things are done properly on a proper jig and are absolutely true and straight as a die. They have all the bolt holes and all the panel mounting points in the right places. They have universal mounting points for the transmission and engine mounts, so you can put all types of different drivetrain configurations in them. They've got the works. Well, look who we've bumped into here, folks. None other than Trevor Davis from Trevor Davis Auto Refinishes. Yes, the man who did my XY, Project Warhorse. And boy, am I happy with that thing. Now, Trev, tell me, what cars have you painted here today? Uh, the Green FC, it's over behind us. The Candy Brandy Wine EH. Um, it's a Candy Camaro just over in the corner right behind us. And, of course, this orange one we're standing right in front of now. Now, this Ranchero here, mate, what a fantastic car. Tell me, how did you get to paint on this thing so spectacular? Lots of elbow grease, just the usual process, just um, lots and lots of elbow grease and attention to detail. And tell us a bit about the type of paint and the colour. It's a cocktail of two House of Colour pearls as a ground coat, candy tangerine with a couple of pearls intermixed into that as an overlay over the top and what you see is what you get. Mate, that sounds pretty complex and I've heard that that candy style paint is very, very hard to paint, is that correct? It can be difficult. In, in essence, you only get one go at doing it, and if um, you make a big mistake, it's rub it down, start again. So you've, you've got to be on your game to do it. Well, mate, fantastic job, and look forward to seeing you in the future when we get Project Warhorse a little bit further down the track. You and me both, mate. I'm looking forward to it as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Now, viewers, I've got a soft spot for these things here. This beautiful 67 Chevy Nova. Over in the US, the pro touring scene is very big, and there's quite a few of these Novas getting around over there, kicking some serious butt. You've got to agree, these things are a pretty tough-looking body style. I know the Camaros and all that are fantastic. Oh, man's got one, a 68 to be exact. But I just do love these Chevy Novas. And who could forget back in the old days, Storm and Norman Beachy driving one of these things, smoking the tyres out of every turn. What a tough car these things are. It's got a very angry 383 in it, this thing. It's got Wilwood brakes all round. It's got a front end clip in it and a four link rear end. It'd be an absolute wild ride to drive on the racetrack and to cruise around on the street. Park it into a show like this and absolutely blows you away. What a sensational car and I'll be happy to own this one.
Well, with Jason Tarando here and his 56 Ford Custom Line. This car stood out to me because it's one of the most original old cars for its age that I have ever seen. It's even got the plastic on the seats. Jason, tell us a little bit about the car and the history, mate. Uh, it's uh, originally uh, sold up at Brisbane um, at a Ford dealership up there. It's done 48,000 genuine miles. It's uh, all totally original. I got it off the original owner quite a few years ago. It's got the original plastic over the seat, still got the original exhaust on it. So it was repainted about nine years ago outside, but everything underneath and inside is still dead stock. 272 wire block, three speed manual. Um, just a good original stock car. So that's so it's an Australian like. delivered car, too, so you know the history is smack on. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's uh, matching to me two door Victoria that I've got which is the same colour, so... Lucky man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy it. I wouldn't sell it. Um, but it's a really good car, so... Well, thanks for talking with Jason. Incredible car, and it's a credit to you, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, here's something you don't see every day. This 56 Continental Mark II. It sports a 362 wire block and a three-speed trans. There was 3,014 of these things made in the 56 and 57 model year. Now, interestingly, they were twice the price of probably their closest competitor, the Cadillac of the same year vintage, $10,000. That was a hell of a lot of money back in 1956. In fact, in the end, Ford were losing about $1,000 per car and actually decided to discontinue this model. But it's just great to see something a little bit unique. There was only 75 of these things built in this exact colour combination. So it's super, super rare. Well, viewers, this one stopped me in my tracks. I'm very impressed with this absolutely beautiful 1967 Pontiac Parisian. What a fantastic cruiser this thing would be. Starting with a beautiful 454 under the hood, a turbo 700 four-speed trans, a 12-bolt differential, and a UPC disc brake conversion on the front. This thing is absolutely immaculate and a credit to the builder of the car. Imagine this thing with the windows down, cruising along down the highway on that warm day. It'd be absolutely superb. Here we are with Rob Geruso and his absolutely immaculate 56 Fairlane Victoria. I love the low, slick roof line on these things. They're a great looking car. Tell us a little bit about it, Rob. Yeah, well, the car um, came into country the 4th of October last year. Um, the car is in very good condition. Um, all I've done to it since I've got it is um, give it a good cut and polish. We've changed the tyres and tuned it and rebushed the front end. And yeah, that's all we've done and give the interior a good clean. And it's just a. a, a what you got in 1956, that's what it's got here. Factory power steering, everything. And tell us a little bit about the drivetrain, the engine and what have we. That's got a factory 292 stock, um, a Fordomatic and a standard diff. Still runs all the um, factory drums. Yeah, it's, it's, a nice, it's just a nice cruiser to drive. Sit on about 60 on the, on the highway, car sits nice and still on the road, very nice. I've got to say, these 50s model cars are really starting to grow on me now. I was more into the muscle car scene, 60s, what have we, but I'm starting to look at the 50s a lot more. It was a really unique era, wasn't it? Well, I'm that age too, and yeah, when I was a kid, everyone, there was a lot of custom lines around, Studi Bakers and Chevs, and then as I grew older, got out of the street machine scene, got into one of these. Yeah, I mean, I just, it's just a buzz to drive one. When you especially go cruising with your family in it, it's fantastic. Well, mate, I'm extremely envious, and thanks for talking to us, Rob. Enjoy the rest of the show, mate. You're welcome. Well, we're here with Mark Foster and his beautifully restored 1958 FC Holden. Tell us a little bit about the car, mate. Uh, I've had the car about 30 years. Um, it's been off the road for the last 15. I've only just finished restoring it. Done 90% uh, of it myself. Still been bare metal underneath, outside. It's all painted in two-pack Glazerit 2K. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, Alpine white and fountain blue. And, uh, I'm pretty pleased the way it's come up, actually. <laughs> And I noticed you've got the old 138 grey in there, mate, some triples, the yellow yeah. rocker cover all the gear. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the I'm motor. It's actually going to V8 it there at one stage, but oh, no, it's a pretty unique car, this one. And uh, it's had all the motor rebuilt. It's got um, triple SUs, inch and a quarter. It's got a performance head in it, Georgie Wade cam. Yeah, it goes like a rocket, mate. I love it. 
I love the work you've done with it, mate. It's got that real old school hot rodder sort of races type theme from the 60s. If you went back in time in a time machine, mate, and stepped into this car, it'd be exactly how they were back oh, then. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty unique, these old things. There's not many at the show, actually. Yeah. There's only three FCs in here, right? I saw. Yeah, no, I'm very proud of it, actually. Well, it's good to see you, mate, and thanks for talking to us and enjoy the show. Good thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Glenn. Well, we're here at the Shannon's Insurance Stand with Liz, and I'm sure you'd agree, Liz, it's an enormous show here and a massive crowd. How's it been going for you? Oh, really good. It's been a great turnout. We've had lots of people come past. It's been really good to be able to um, help them out with their needs and that sort of thing, especially the people who have their cars here. It's been a great day. I'm sure you'll agree, the whole car scene in general, the classics, the muscle cars, the hot rods, it's growing out of this world and it's really good to see that the families that are coming through, the kids, the adults, it's great to see everyone getting involved. And the good thing is, obviously, with the Shannon side of things, they've got their, their vehicle options, which we feature in your home insurance, your car insurance, bike insurance, all that sort of stuff. But there's the new Shannon's Club. I've got on there, I'm absolutely blown away by it. Tell us a little bit more about it. It's our new social networking site. I mean, you can get on there, you can upload photos of your cars, have your own garage, you can have um, cars that you're hoping to buy, um, cars you've had in the past, ones you've done up, all that sort of thing. It's a real hub for motoring enthusiasts. Well, I've got to say, from what I've seen, I'm absolutely blown away by it. I've been uploading photos on there like a madman, putting video on there, you name it. Project War Horse is up there. I'm having a ball, and thanks for talking to us today, Liz. No worries, enjoy the show. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you've got to love these early Corvettes, don't you? This 63 split window Corvette. You might remember, just recently, on one of the gasoline episodes, a good friend of mine, Joe, owns the red early Corvette that Peter Brock drove over at the Goodwood Festival. They're just an iconic car and a tough-looking piece of machinery. This thing here is extremely tidy and sports a 327 with a four-speed manual and three seven diff gears, so she'd be a very potent piece of machinery. I love the split windows on these things. It's an interesting story. When the next model came out, it was very similar in the body style. A lot of those new owners of those cars actually liked the split window design so much of the earlier model, they were taking them into body shops and getting them to add that split section and the new windows down the middle. Isn't that unbelievable? But I can understand why, because it's unique. What a beautiful car. We're here with Peter Genomatis, and he's got two matching 56 Fords here, a sedan and a wagon. Great looking pair, mate. Thank Tell you. us a little bit about them. Thank you. I've just um, actually recently got them in the country. Um, the 56 Ford All Pillars and a 56 Ford All Wagon. Just came in on Tuesday, actually. So you got them from the US, obviously. US from a guy um, who's got maybe 80 in his collection. He worked for the Post over there in America. And he was going, you know, coming back empty with his truck, and he was collecting 55s and 56 cars and bringing them back and that's how we got his over nearly 100 cars 80 to 100 cars he's got so yeah that's unbelievable mate at least it's he's obviously happy to see these cars going to someone who appreciates them he, he actually did you know he goes i'm pretty happy that he, and he also heard that i've got a, so many himself um yeah he was pretty happy that it was going to a good collection 80 cars mate yeah. so there's still a bit of an opportunity out there people are obviously selling a, a few cars off these days with the global economy that's right that's right they um yeah they're here selling them off so Pretty happy with them. Well, that's fantastic, mate. You've got two cars to choose from, and thanks for talking to us, and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for the 2012 Victorian Hot Rod Show. It's been a fantastic event with heaps and heaps of cars. The problem is I just can't cover them all in one episode. Either way, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time on Gasoline. you enjoyed the episode as you can see here project warhorse is coming along just nicely but i want to talk to you about gasoline we need your help the car enthusiast community we need you to get behind us to keep this show going strong this show is made for car enthusiasts just like you and me so it'll be great to see it continue for many years to come tell your friends jump on forums spread the word at car shows whatever you can do Please help, we'd really appreciate it. And if you're interested in checking out Project Warhorse and all the previous segments, 
feel free to go to the gasoline website or go to Shannon's Club. Click on my garage there, go in there, you'll see pictures, videos, specifications, stories, you name it. I'm sure you'll enjoy it and there's plenty more to come too. Anyway, that's enough of me talking. I better get back into building this car or it'll never get finished. I'll see you next time. Gasoline is proudly brought to you by the following sponsors.